The peeper beetle was everybody's new favorite creature from the Age of Resistance. It was responsible for one of the darkest, most gruesome, and most rememberable scenes in the show. As its name suggests, these creatures were known to aggressively attack a person or animal's eyes exclusively, as it craved the soft, gelatinous flesh of fresh eyeballs. In the wild, they could be found in many areas of Thra, but the most common area was the Spriton Plains. There, they would burrow into freshly tilled soil and lie in wait for their victims to stroll or run by. And the beetle wasn't picky about its selections. Most of the time, they would go for smaller prey, but on occasion, they would even attack unsuspecting Gelfling if the need arose, using its thin, barbed legs to swiftly grip and climb, and its razor-sharp, jagged teeth to gouge the orbs. The thrush pog is perhaps the greatest example of the connection between all life on Thra. It is a plant, an animal, an individual being, and a connected nest all at once. Growing only in the endless forest, these special creatures inhabited the knots in trees, appearing as long-necked animated plants with two ear-like leaves atop its head to pick up vibrations, and at the opposite end, a stomach fitted into the tree for which they would share nutrients and rainwater in return for shelter. They live in large communal groups, all connected by thin fibrous tubers which would run through the trees to each community, and some of these groups can stretch from the heart of Sammy Thicket all the way to the borders of the Stonewood clan. Not only is this incredibly unique, but they are quite literally a living representation of the connections of all living souls on the planet. When all Madra Marin had passed away, wind sifters were the creatures used to collect the pieces of the ruler's crown to bring it to the ceremony. In fact, since the Age of Harmony, they were utilized by the Gelfling to deliver important messages from one side of Thra to the other. And very interestingly, they actually had an impact on the political power of each clan. This has led the Gelfling to prize and cherish the wind sifters over many ages and many have even dedicated their entire lives to training and protecting them, even introducing new varieties through selective breeding. With majestic names such as the Great Scarlet Wind Sifter and the Lowland Speckled Wind Sifter, their makeup was just as graceful. With compact rounded bodies, soft flower-like wings, intelligent eyes, two strong clawed feet, and thread-like antenna that stuck out from their foreheads, which could sense the tiniest change in the air and wind direction. They also had one of the most impressive wingspans, as well as a sharp mind for geography. The Una Moth is the sigil animal of the Vapor Clan, and it is this very creature that first guided Brea on her quest. They were found in almost every single region of the land, beginning their life first as tiny larvae and eventually transforming themselves into a magnificent crystal which resembled stunning colored blown glass. Many of these hung in the All Madras chamber, simplifying their powerful connection. And when the time comes for them to fully emerge and unfurl their wings, they can be so gigantic that they even outmeasure many of Thra's predatory birds. For all of these wondrous reasons, Sifan soothsayers believe them to be sacred, as they fully represent the changing of times, life, and stages of existence. Appearing as armored moles with crustacean-like eye stalks, the Moog was a creature found exclusively in the Crystal Desert, most often only visible by its eyes and nose sticking up out of the sand. Moogs loved the cool, moisturized areas deep down under the crystal sands, and would often dig so far down that they would inadvertently cut into underground springs, which would sometimes lead to the creation of a brand new oasis. They were also ravenous insectivores, keeping the desert's population of biting and stinging insects at bay. It was for these reasons that the Dusan honored them. They even considered it bad luck to kill one. And the bones you see crafted into Dusan jewelry and charms, well, those were actually the creature's bones, which were also used for rituals. In many ways, the Moogs were the second sigil animal for the Dusan clan. 
Now here is a familiar creature that we all know very well, but yet we don't know so much about them. The crystal bats were actually not natural creatures, but completely designed and molded into existence by the Skeksis, the same way that the Gartham were during the Gartham Wars. Fitted with a Skeksis made crystal, which was held onto by tiny claws, the bats were both animal and mineral, using their crystal bodies to transmit any image they saw back to the crystal castle. Sparing no expense, the crystal bats were created in such large numbers that mobs of thousands could be seen wafting through the skies, oftentimes blotting out the sun like a massive dark cloud. Because of this, the Skeksis would intermittently lose track of entire flocks, leaving the bats to fend for themselves in individual communities long into the Age of Power. When wandering through the forests of Thra, if you happen to see a pile of rocks that resembles a face, it might actually be a face. These structures were called phyllites, and they were quite literally giant piles of talking rocks. They were entirely immobile life forms, unable to hunt or actively search for food, so they received all of their necessary nutrients from the moss and plant life growing on their lips. Although on occasion, a random animal would wander into their stone mouths and soon find itself squeezed to death. Even with the ability to speak, these strange creatures have such an odd dialect that it is completely unintelligible, and only Mother Agra could understand them, although she found them to be terribly boring. The firebug is a fascinating specimen. These tiny creatures had a small body with six jelly legs wobbling beneath it, and two large eye stalks that it utilized to keep track of its wandering through the air. At birth, a firebug's body would fill with luminous gases, ballooning its upper body until it began to float through the air, carried away with the ever-changing winds, shining with a warm glow as they traveled from place to place. Very interestingly, a firebug never touched the ground until the moment of death, spending its entire life floating through the air. They were mostly used by Gelfling lamplighters, who kept these creatures in clear pens to act as lanterns in various locations, as they were one of the only creatures quite content with being held in captivity, with a steady diet of their favorite nectar. The Bortog was one of a handful of creatures which was not actually native to Thra. During the Age of Powers storyline, they were transported here from the Erskek homeworld, and were utilized for transportation, as it could fit several Gelfling on its long back. They were elegant beings, resembling water dragons or huge luminous flying eels, which is realistically what they were. During Jen and Kira's rule over their new nation, they were a valued asset, known extensively for their brute strength, power, and lightning-fast speed. Chances are that in the background of some of the most gorgeous cinematic shots in Age of Resistance, you will likely see magical, graceful creatures floating through the air. One of these was called the Vindal. Known as grass dancers to the Spriten children, Vindals were found throughout the plains and the endless forest, most of the time wafting through the air as if performing a ballet. Although their dance was beautiful, their spinning arm patterns were actually a defense mechanism used to quickly escape their predators, as their bright colors and delicate nature made them easy targets. With a curvaceous frame, graceful composure, and a regal crown of leaves, Vindals are one of the most wondrous, gorgeous beings in all of Thraw.